ship variants used to be a common thing in the not so distant past in Star Citizen, but they seem to have disappeared, being gradually replaced by newer, more specialized concept ships. In this video, we are therefore going to revisit 10 ships and vehicles that our current roster could benefit from possible new variants. Hello and welcome to the channel, it's the Eradicator, and in this video we will discuss possible variants for existing vehicles within a game. The purpose of this video is of course to have fun speculating about what could be possible, but also what possible variants the developers are working on right now, since this is actually something that they said they were doing at this moment for unspecified vehicles. We'll first start with the Mercury Star Runner, in this case the Mercury Star Runner Cargo. Crusader Industries' Mercury Star Runner is definitely a fan favorite among Star Citizen fans for its looks but also its polyvalence. However, it only came with one standard data running version, and I think that this leaves some room for a couple of variants that would bring Cloud Imperial Games some significant revenue. One such possible variant could be a cargo variant of the ship that could perhaps improve the actual design. For example, it could be given the second entrance so many people are asking for. Of course, this variant would also get rid of the currently useless server room to increase ship cargo capacity and put it on par with ships like, for example, the Freelancer Max or the Constellation Taurus. Next, I would like to talk about the idea of a heavily modified Banu Defender, so technically it would be a variant since not much would change actually, and this ship would be the Banu Courier, a ship made to transport smaller quantities of goods, a little bit like how the Avenger Titan uh, comes uh, can, do, can do. To achieve this, well, perhaps this uh, ship could uh, have a deeper interior to allow owners to put more cargo containers inside and maybe perhaps the two gun arms in the front could be removed and um, replaced with a possible moving turrets like the one found on the Scorpius which would be operated by the co-pilot. This of course would also encourage multi-crew. It would also expand the roster of Banu ships which is quite um, paper thin actually compared to the Vandals or the Sheehan's and just feels weird uh, that there are only two ships at this time for this particular civilization. Next we'll talk about a possible Draycat delivery vehicle. And the Drake Mule proved that there is a market for small cargo delivery vehicles and if a generous manufacturer like Drake can pull it off with a functional and polyvalent vehicle like the Mule then surely industrial specialist Greycat can make a successful competitor. And I think that this one will be based on the PTV and this variant would have an enclosed cabin similar to the PTV but with two front seats and also it would feature a small cargo area in its back capable of carrying up to two cargo boxes allowing it to directly take on the mule head-on in terms of carrying capacity. And to keep the mule relevant, of course, perhaps we could leave out the delivery box racks uh, that we can find on the sides of the mule. Et voila, you have a nice little delivery vehicle, and I'm sure a lot of industrialist players will actually find it quite attractive. Next, we'll talk about uh, a luxury ship here, and that would be the 600i. And just like I believe there should be a cargo version of the Mercury Star Runner, I believe that the 600i also could use more variants, including a cargo version. I mean, I don't see why a luxury maker like Origin wouldn't make an upscale cargo vehicle. After all, Mercedes-Benz also make trucks and vans, so why wouldn't Origin make a cargo ship, say the size of a Constellation, for haulers who want to fly something a little bit more upscale? Keep, for example, the 600i shields and keep the shape as well, remove most of the habitation module and replace it with a big cargo area and you've got another ship that thousands of backers would definitely buy on day one. We are going to stick with Origin here and we'll talk about the Origin C50. And just like the C100 series could have more variants, I also believe that the M50 could have a little counterpart here dedicated to combat that we could call, for example, the C50 because C4 combat, right? I mean, M would be for motorsport. I think it makes sense. Anyway, uh, if you remember, the M50 was originally sold as an interceptor and then slowly drifted towards being labeled a racer. And while it still is a fun ship to use in combat, there are plenty of other ships that do better and that's why a dedicated variant would make sense for 
all this awesome little craft and we also make it a little bit more attractive for example give it a more robust power plant that could for example increase capacitor levels which would then make the ship more viable in combat and it would be able to fire its laser repeaters for a longer period Perhaps also the combat variants could uh, move a little slower than the racer to compensate for the heavier power plant. And I think that with this ship's combat abilities restored, we could once more have that fast little ship that's hard to hit, um, kind of a light interceptor that the game is lacking at this moment. You know, the equivalent of an A-wing interceptor, for those who are familiar with the Star Wars universe, that combines speeds and enough firepower to be considered a threat to other fighters. Next, the Gladiator Bomber. Now, I know what you're going to say, Irad, we already have a Gladiator Bomber, and that's true. Uh, it is the name that this ship has, but it is not a proper bomber, actually. It's more of a torpedo boat, because that's what it does, launching torpedoes, which is pretty cool when you are in a squadron, but quite frustrating when you're flying solo. So making it a pocket bomber, however, would make it far more interesting for smaller operations, say for example to carry precision strikes against craft vehicle or against a group of infantry soldiers. It could therefore be a much more interesting bomber than the A2 that just obliterates everything with, uh, within the, its <laughs> a large area. Next, we'll go back to uh, Origin here with the 300L, L4 Lounge. And taxi missions are coming one day, they will at least, yet we do not have a vehicle made for comfortably transporting a few passengers from A to B like a Mercedes S-Class would do nowadays. And that is why CIG could create a new variant for the 300 series and that would be the 300L. Uh, for example, you remove the bed and the bedrooms and instead you add four seats and some windows and you've got a perfect ship for the job. That would also be easier to make than creating a brand new design like for example a potential 200 series. Next we'll talk about a ship that is not in the game right now but it's going to be very soon that is the Drake Corsair and I think that here we could have a Corsair Vault. Now let's be real here obviously there are quite a few Corsair owners who will not be using their ship for lawful purposes if you see what I mean. That means that they will be carrying in their hull uh, probably some illegal and valuable goods. And why not sacrificing the ship's ability to carry an Ursa by adding a vault that would shield its interior from scanning and secure its cargo if the ship gets destroyed? That's what the Drake Corsair Vault would be. Discretion and security and will be a nice alternative for player who may not necessarily be interested in exploration. Next, we'll talk about the MPUV here from Argo and that would be the long range version. And I really love the compact design of the MPUV and how functional this little ship can be. And I just feel so frustrated that it can't get that I cannot get any chances to flight due to its lack of quantum travel drive, which prevents players from doing, for example, interplanet just planetary deliveries. And that is why I would like it to be equipped with a tiny quantum drive that would be, for example, size zero that would allow players to travel from a planet to a moon, which would be the far farthest uh, it could be and that could be useful for delivery missions or cave missions and it would also not compete against the Pisces uh, because the Pisces would be much lower range and to uh, keep that spirit here of uh, keeping the Pisces relevant perhaps we would keep the MPUV unarmed and cheaper and I think that CIG here would get themselves a winner and I left the best for the end the Cutlass Purple, this is not a joke actually, when I first saw that ship at the 2950 Expo, I said to myself, no way, and unfortunately it was a joke indeed, however, I for one would love to own a Cutlass Purple, I mean make it for example, a, a non-official ultra rare variant only gainable by achieving max reputation and maybe finishing a quest line of a of a mission giver like Eddie Parr for example and you'll have the ultimate trophy ship to show off to your friends and of course uh, you will have to keep the iconic disco ball to be able to uh, throw in some sound and spice thing up perhaps perhaps during a uh, player event how awesome would that be right 
Anyway, there we have it guys with 10 ideas for possible ship variants, but let me know in the comment section down below guys, uh, do you have any variant ideas of your own or is there an ID here perhaps that you liked in particular? What do you guys think Cloud Imperial Games uh, should do? Let me know and subscribe to get to win a Centurion with LTI. We also have two more uh, Centurions to give away on Discord as well. All you have to do is to join on Discord, the link is in the description down below and join our video sharing contest or you can also become a Patreon or a YouTube John member. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to the Digiton, Eric Ohm, Captain Snake, Geek Citizen, and Dr. Fabin. It's been the Eradicator, and I will see you guys later.